name is Maya Yuvi. Some of you guys may know me as Mahmoud's wife, um, and some of you may not know me. But aside from being his wife, I'm actually a data scientist slash analyst. And today we'll be talking about exploring 250 plus Python applications awesomely. Um, some of you may ask, well, what is an awesome Python application? And basically, it's an application that is primarily written in Python. For example, we have YouTube DL, Reddit, and Jupyter Notebooks. Um, so this talk came to be because Mahmoud approached me uh, a week before PyBay, asking me if I put together some visuals for him, some statistical visuals. And having basically no experience in Python prior um, and no uh, open source project under my belt, I decided to gladly agree to do this for him, despite the time crunch. So for those of you who were at PyBay and saw Mahmoud's talk, this is, these are some of the slides you saw. Um, we'll be going over how I created some of these visuals and the techniques that were used. So what libraries did we use? So we used Pandas, Seaborn, Matplotlib, and we imported DateTime. So we're going to use Pandas um, read CSV function and read in the CSV and call it APADF. DF stands for data frame. Oh, yes. Are you going to make this Jupyter Notebook available later? It is available. Okay. Yeah. Um, is that better? Okay. Um, so we're going to do a dot info on the data frame, and we see that there are 253 um, rows. And we have 178 columns. Um, of those, we have 159 numerics and 19 string types. So if we run the dot head function, we get the first five rows of the data frame. And if you continue to scroll over to the right, you'll notice that it doesn't actually display all of the columns. And that's because it, it's a really long data, data frame. And so we can use the dot set option in pandas um, for configuration. So if you say to display the max columns as the length of the data frame columns, and then rerun APA data frame, you should be getting all the columns that you want to, or all the columns that are present, which is way better <laughs> at looking at. Um, next, we do the dot describe function. Um, this is really helpful for kind of just spot checking the data. This kind of just gives you a descriptive statistic of all the columns. Um, it's really good for trying to find any type of um, interesting uh, visuals that you want to create later or any type of analysis you want to do. Um, this basically is just saying, hey, replace any periods with underscores in the column names. You don't have to do this. This is just a personal preference. But if you are interested, this is one way to do it. Um, I'm going to come back to this. This is going to be actually really important when I talk about um, plotting and choosing the right colors. Because as you saw previously in the slides that I showed, um, I wanted to match my plots to Mahmoud's um, color scheme for his slides. And this is our color scheme. So let's start with one of the biggest topics in Python right now, Python 3 compatibility. Um, the data frame that we're working with actually has two categorical columns for Python 2 compatibility and Python 3 compatibility. And a really good way of visualizing um, categorical variables is a pie chart. And so if we put this in a pie chart, because we want to see what proportion of Python 3 applications depend on what minimum version of Python 3. And so when we run the pie chart, you'll notice that this is the figure that we get. So the reason why I talked about a little bit earlier about um, wanting to kind of define a function and set your um, color palette is because the default method that um, matplotlib displays is not that nice. So if we go back up, we see that I created a color palette to match Mahmoud's um, slides. And then I defined um, some defaults for the pie plot. So this is actually really important because it takes so many options. And for me, this was a little bit difficult because it does take so many options. And so it's kind of hard to get it exactly perfect. But this is actually really helpful. And so when I define the function and set all the defaults, assign it my color palette, assign it the um, radius size and all that, 
what we end up getting actually, instead of this default, we get a much nicer uh, pie chart. And so what this is basically telling us is that, um, for example, 8% of Python 3 applications use three, Python 3.7. But how many applications still use Python 2? How many of them are not actually compatible with Python 3? Well, we don't have a column that tells us this. However, we can create one based on the two columns that I talked about earlier, Python 2 compatibility and Python 3 compatibility. We do this by defining a function that says, hey, if Python 2 and Python 3 is not null, then return Python 2, 3. And if Python 2 column is null, return Python 3, else return Python 2. And so when we run this function, and we decide to do another pie chart to show our data with the new um, column that we've created, it tells us a much more interesting story. I'm going to do control minus real quick because it's like cutting off. OK. Um, so basically saying us that 56% of applications are Python 3 compatible, whereas 9% are Python 2 and 3, and 35% are Python 2. So what can we say about Python 2 compatible projects? I mean, I hypothesize that, OK, maybe they're just older projects. Um, so fortunately, Mahmoud actually cloned the repos and grabbed the data of the first commit date of each project. And so we actually have a start time column that we can work with. And so if we run it, saying grab first commit and Python, Python 2, 3 compat, we actually see, yeah, we do have um, a good um, column we can work with, us with for time. And so I'm going to run a swarm plot. And for those of you who aren't very knowledgeable of swarm plot, it's a Seaborn. Um, it's, it's built in Seaborn. It's built on top of matplotlib. And it provides a much nicer visual than just plotting anything in matplotlib, basically. Um, so it takes one um, categorical variable, and it takes one numeric. Um, and a swarm plot's really good for this because it's really good at uh, plotting independent categorical points along a continuous axis. And so if we run that, OK, so we have an error. Um, and this basically is telling us that, right. So I don't know if you can read it, but it says neither the x nor y variable appears to be numeric. So I had initially thought that the first commit would be the numeric variable, but apparently not. So let's just see what type it is. And we do this by doing um, apadf.dtypes for first commit. And we notice it is a um, object type. So I want to convert that to a numeric. So fortunately, I imported date time earlier. And I can convert this from an object type to a date time, which to a date, which basically becomes a numeric. So if you look at the data again, you see that it does look different than it did previously. So it means that you know the conversion worked. Um, and so if now if we retry to run our swarm plot with this new variable, OK, so we have some more issues. And this kind of boggled my mind at first. I was like, what is going on here? <laughs> but it seems like the issue is something to do with the dates, right? Because obviously, Python did not exist in the year 1680. So. <laughs> Um, so what we do actually is let's just take a look at the these let's do set option again panda set option to look at all of the rows for first commit and see what's going on. So we notice right uh, row number 24 we notice that we have an NAT NAT not a time and so I said okay well what if we remove those and see how it goes and so basically I did drop any NAs from um, the APA data frame for, for first commit column and rerun the swarm plot. That's fine. Doesn't, doesn't matter. So now we actually have a swarm plot we can work with. OK, so now we have a swarm plot we can work with. So what do we really see here that's interesting, right? Well, I hypothesize that maybe Python 2 compatible projects were older projects. But if you can tell, between 2016 and 2019, there are still projects coming out that are not Python 3 compatible. So that kind of throws my hypothesis out the window. 
But if you really look closer, you notice that Python 3 projects are starting to widen, right? It starts off kind of slim in the beginning and then it widens, whereas Python 2 is kind of tapering at this point. So this is actually still very, um, it's, it's a very good sign, you know? <laughs> so hopefully we can continue creating projects in Python 3 and not in Python 2, because we all know it's not going to be working next year. <laughs> um, unfortunately, I don't have enough time to show you all the analytics that I did for Mahmoud's talk, um, but this was a really fun project. And if you guys are interested in, you know, contributing, this is actually up on GitHub in Mahmoud's GitHub, Mahmoud slash awesome Python applications. And if you're interested in actually seeing the slides Mahmoud did, this is the link to it. Take a picture if you want. Um, and if you want to contact me, I have my email, my Twitter, my GitHub. And, um, any, and any type of collaboration on this project is really welcome. I'm still a beginner, um, so I would love to learn more from other fellow um, Pythonists. Thank you so much. Thank you.